Our next honoree is known for his journalistic excellence, but a lot of people just know him for those amazing pipes, the vocal chops. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch the video. WBZ's award-winning news team brings you the most accurate and comprehensive news in this city. Listo Fisher, one of Boston's most aggressive reporters, is getting the facts to bring you the entire story. In light of last week's state Supreme Court decision upholding their rape conviction, no matter what the issue, you can trust the accuracy of his reports. The closed-door meeting at school committee headquarters is expected to bring together some... All to bring you the latest and most accurate information. Listo Fisher, WBZ News. WBZ Radio News. It's tough to keep up with. Mayor, uh, when exactly will you be leaving for China and how long are you going to be there? Uh, I'm leaving on April 24th, and I'm going to stay until I see one decent headline inviting me back. You're going to be there a long time. I suspect that's a call for. WRKO News at 3. Good afternoon, I'm Listo Fisher. Here's what's happening. This investigation. Meteorologist Harvey Leonard with the latest exclusive WHDH radar win. Listo, the heaviest precipitation is over, but... The Boston Pops was conducted by Arthur Fiedler. That was from the third day of three that marked the Boston Pops recording debut. I'm Listo Fisher. Star After Dark. After Dark. On Star 93.7. If, um, if James Earl Jones ever gets tired of saying, this is CNN, that's the guy. The lovely lady who's going to present, they met many years ago at WBZ, and she calls him a terrific mentor and friend. Please welcome Susan Warnick. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I'm thrilled to be here. When you retire from television and you're not on the air for four years, people think you're dead. <laughs> Congratulations to all of the inductees today. Of course, it's very special, uh, Listo, of course, but uh, to have two former colleagues from Channel 5, Karen and Harvey, with whom I worked for so long, um, it's just great. And, and Sarah, it's a great reunion, you know? It's just, it's just been great. So now start my two minutes, because now I'm going to start talking about Listo. Okay, good. So, right. um, Listo Fisher is um, just an amazing guy. He said to me before, um, I hope you're not going to embarrass me. And I said, Listo, my gosh, I'm not going to embarrass you. I hope I don't cry. Because my heart is so full of wonderful stories about this terrific guy. Um, it is true. Um, I met him in the late 70s. My first job in, tele in uh, media in Boston was at WBZ radio, late 70s, I come in for my first shift, and Listo is there to greet me. And I loved him immediately. He's one of the few I didn't marry. <laughs> Lydia, it's just important you know that now. And it's only because he never asked me. But he was truly an amazing mentor to me. Um, the first day that I walked in, I was nervous, as you can imagine. And he said, you'll be fine, Susan. You'll be fine. He's, you already have a lead story. And I said, what's that? And he said, well, you know, there's been a shooting in Jamaica Plain. And I said, I can't lead with a shooting all night. And he said, no, no, no. He said, the guy's going to die. And I said, how do you know that? And he said, we get shot in the stomach. He gets shot in the stomach, and the EMTs weren't there for a good three or four minutes. I'm telling you, he has no hope. And I thought, how does he know that? And you were right. And, and he was right, and I thought, oh my gosh, this man's also a doctor. <laughs> but then what I did come to realize as I worked with Listo for all of those years um, was that he was a man truly with heart. He was a man of great substance. You will read about his career um, in your program book, and I hope you do. And then you'll know that he, he not only worked in journalism, but he also ran Dave, he um, ran all the communications for Dave Finnegan when he ran for mayor and left journalism, went to politics, went to government, and then came back to journalism. Who does that? I'll tell you who does that. Somebody who's got the faith and the respect and the absolute heart 
of someone that people love and, and respect, and that was Listo, who came back and forth pretty much to any job he ever wanted because people knew Listo Fisher. They knew the name and they knew the voice for sure, but what they really knew was the reputation. And this is a man who is far more than his name. Came to this country when he was 12 years old from Panama, lived in the Bronx, not far from Harvey actually, many of you don't know that, um, and they didn't know it at the time, but decided he, journalism was his passion, and so did whatever he had to do to become one of the best in the business, and not just because of his journalistic skills. You would assume that when you are inducted into this great hall of fame that you have earned it because of your professional skills. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to tell you that Listo Fisher is much more than that. He is a gentleman, he is a kind-hearted soul. He taught me compassion, he taught me love, he did teach me about journalism, but mostly he taught me about life. And journalism lost a great when Listo in Boston decided that he was no longer going to broadcast. And so he started broadcasting for radio stations in South Africa. And they are lucky. So I know that there are a lot of news managers in the room right now, Listo, who immediately after your speech in this event are going to have job offers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how proud I am that Listo was the one, that Listo asked me to be the one to present him today, and so I do the next inductee into the Massachusetts Broadcasters Hall of Fame, and no one deserves it more than the great list of Fisher. I guess this is what you feel like when, you're, when you have the honor of being awake at your own funeral. This is, this is incredible. Wow. Thank you, Susan. Good to have you here. It's been a lot of years. Susan, Susan said we've known each other for 40 years. That's, that's a long time. I am humbled and honored by this. You know, uh, to be recognized for what you do is, is kind of a blessing. But to be honored by your peers for what you do is, in a word, awesome. It is just wonderful, so thank you. I wanted to make sure I didn't leave out anything, so I jotted down <laughs> a few notes, just, you know, just so I will, won't forget anything. Actually, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be brief. I wanna make three points. Uh, I've heard this story several times from both uh, Governor Charlie Baker and, and the Mass Housing uh, Executive Director Crystal Cornegay. The governor says that during his last campaign, he was forced to attend one of those multi-candidate forums, this one on housing. And at the end of the forum, a short black woman approached our very tall white Republican candidate and handed him her card. She told him, if you really want to talk about housing, give me a call. He slipped the card into his pocket with no real intention of acting on this suggestion. But a few months later, the candidate said he had a break in his schedule and he found the card. He located the office in Dorchester and they talked about housing for a long time, and they bonded. Long story short, when he won his election, Baker says he was delighted to offer Crystal Cornegay a position of Under Secretary of Housing and Community Development. They both took away two morals from this story. Always show up, always say yes, you never know where it could lead. So I implore you, always show up, always say yes. My second point, if you're still in the business, if you're still a reporter, an anchor, a writer, a producer, a director, a camera person, I feel your pain. <laughs> You've had to put up with consolidations, and cutbacks, and reductions in benefits, less is more, Managers who don't know what they're doing, not that there'd be anybody 
like that here. It yeah, so wouldn't happen. But my advice to you is to please continue doing what you're doing. Do it with diligence, do it with integrity, do it with honesty, and do it with fairness because our country needs you now more than ever. And the last thing I'll say is about goals. Despite my very limited success, I did not attain my goal. You see, my goal was to succeed Walter Cronkite. And I can see all the millennials in the room going, who is Walter Cronkite? I never felt comfortable, however, doing television. I tried a couple of times, couldn't control my hands or my facial movements. Nevertheless, I thought that some CBS executive somewhere would, would hear me on the radio and say, you know, you know, that guy Fisher should be out replacing for Cronkite. It didn't happen, of course. But I now am retired. I still read four newspapers a day. And I am a big fan of TMZ, so I know all about McMill, Meek Mill, Cardi B, the Kardashians, and the rest of them. So if there are any TV executives in the audience looking for fresh talent, <laughs> give me a call. I am tanned, I'm well rested, and I am ready to give TV another try. Thank you so much. <laughs>